Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're out the range to talk about revolvers, something we don't talk a whole lot about here on the channel, but it's not because I don't like them or love them. I do. Now, I generally collect old military revolvers from World War I and World War II era, but I also have some modern revolvers like this Dan Wesson, but this isn't the revolver I want to talk about today. The Dan Wesson you see here is one of my few modern revolvers that I have in my collection. The reason I have this one is one, it's extremely high quality in my opinion, and two, I can change the barrel links on it relatively easily, so when I do my testing, I can get different velocities based upon the different barrels that I can install on the handgun. But today's video is about a very special German-made handgun, and it's being sold by Nighthawk, a famous name mostly for 1911s, and that's what we want to talk about in today's video. But before we get started with today's video, guys, if you enjoy the content that we produce here at the Military Arms Channel, please take a moment to join our Patreon family. There is a link in the video description below. That's how we primarily fund here at the Military Arms Channel. If you join our Patreon family, you'll get early access to videos like this one. You'll have direct access to me. I answer all private communications. And there's some other perks as well. So please click that link in the video description below. With that being said, let's get started with today's video and fire off a few rounds out of the day on Wesson. Something just satisfying about shooting a revolver. Over the years, you guys have seen me use a lot of primary arms optics, everything from red dot sights to magnified optics. And why do I do that? Well, over the years, they've offered very good products for a very fair price. They have fast shipping, outstanding customer support, and that's why you've seen me using those products for so many years. If you guys would like to pick up a magnified optic like you see on this Daniel Defense Mark 12, you can pick up an optic like this one. Just put it in your cart over at pa.com or primaryarms.com. And if you use the code MAC at checkout, MAC at checkout, you'll get a free scope mount with your optic. And that goes for any primary arms branded optic. If you pick up an optic that has an integrated mount, use that code MACMAC at checkout and you'll get a free kill flash ARD for that optic. So please swing by and check out primaryarms.com. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Korth Revolver. It's made in Germany and it kind of reminds you of the old hand fit Colt Pythons back in the golden era of revolvers that were manufactured here in the United States. But I would say that this revolver, having owned Pythons, this revolver goes even a step above that. The craftsmanship, the quality, the fitment and finish of the gun is literally second to none. And because it commands such a high price, these things can range anywhere from like $3,200 all the way up to $8,000, I think, for one of their limited edition revolvers. They're not inexpensive, but keep in mind the price of this isn't all that shocking when you take a look at the amount of money people will pay again for old pythons and guns like that. This gun does feature a DLC finish. This is a four inch barrel, but it does have barrel lengths that range from 2.75 inches all the way up to six inches. So there's five different barrel lengths that you can order the gun in. It is, uh, has a very high polished trigger on it, nicely rounded, and easily one of the smoothest double action trigger pulls I've ever felt. I will try to get the trigger pull gauge on it because I do think it's light enough where I can actually measure it. But beyond that, here in the grip, now if you get the wooden grips, you won't have to take the, the grip off to accomplish this, but with this particular pistol with the polymer grip, you can take the grip off and then there's an adjustable screw in there that will allow you to adjust how heavy your, your double action trigger pull is. Now keep in mind that will probably also affect how heavy, heavily the, the hammer falls potentially uh, and it might not ignite some primers, but you do have that ability to lighten that trigger pull considerably, lighten that spring pressure. So that's an interesting feature on the gun. Again, with the wood grips, you don't have to take, take the grips off to access that screw. With the polymer grips, you do have to take them off or the rubberized grips, I should say. Other than that, it has a lot of standard features that you would expect on a double action revolver. It is a double action revolver. Over on the left-hand side of the gun, we have a cylinder release right there where you would expect it. The gun locks in two points. So it will lock up here underneath the barrel lug under the barrel. It'll lock on the cone shape here on the ejector rod. And then it will also lock back here on the blast plate on the back side of the revolver. <clears throat> so you can see the locking points right there with the, where the ejector's coming out. There's one locking point that pushes in a second right there. You'll notice that if you take a look at the face of the cylinder, it's smooth. So the rims of the case do not set down inside of the cylinder. On this side, it says 
course, on it, on the other side, it has the Nighthawk logo. Nighthawk is the one that's bringing these in from Germany. You may wonder what this little button here is. This button, when you depress it, will allow you to take the cylinder out. And we'll talk more about that here in a minute as to why you would want to take the cylinder out so easily on the revolver. It does chamber 357-38, which is the cylinder that's in it. And it will also chamber nine millimeter, which goes back to why I can take, take the uh, cylinder out of the gun. If you look across the top of the gun, it has nice serrations. And then here we have a micro adjustable rear sight. And up front, we have an 18 karat gold bead dot on that front sight. Loading the gun up is just like any other gun. Now, there are speed loaders available on the Nighthawk website. When I went there to try to get a speed loader for either the 9mm or the 357, uh, they were out of stock at the time. So I don't have a speed loader here to show you. Now, this gun was sent to me free of charge to make a video on. So I have no money in this gun. Uh, I, I absolutely love this gun, but you know this as configured is about a $3,600 handgun and that's a bit out of my price range. Now the double action on this, again, is incredibly smooth. Both Jason and I, when we first felt it, we were just amazed at how short and smooth the double action is. It's not creepy stagey or anything like that. And when you shoot the gun, that front sight just wants to stay on target as you pull the, the hammer back. Very, very smooth. When you hit the ejector, the cases will fall out. Now, these are 38 specials. The gun does also chamber 357 magnums. We'll do a little bit of shooting with those. Don't have a whole lot of 357 magnum. But everything is just so silky smooth on this gun as you would expect it to be. Everything appears to be hand fit. That cylinder is nice and tight. There's just no cylinder wobble on the gun. Now, of course, it can be fired from the single action mode too, and I'll get a trigger pull weight on that. You'll notice the unique profile of the hammer, how it kind of rises up there, and then it has serrations across it. So you can actually pretty easily get a good grip on that hammer for single action pull. Again, very, very smooth. Just an amazing pistol. Absolutely beautiful. All right, so I'm gonna step up the pace a little bit, fire six shots, fairly rapid fire with the, uh, the Korth pistol, and I'm using the 125 grain pills, three, the 357 Magnum. All right, so now I'm a semi-automatic pistol kind of guy, so I'm used to a much shorter reset. With a double action, you have to let that trigger all the way out before you pull the trigger again for that next shot. Here we go. Hmm. Pretty smooth. I th think that trigger <laughs> really makes a big difference. Now I have a 340 PD Smith & Wesson that I used to carry in a pocket. Uh, shot that quite a bit. My Model 19 I've shot quite a bit. It has a much wider trigger on it, much like the Dan Wesson. This narrow trigger and the grip angle, just everything about this, just feels like, I don't know, a high-end revolver, which is exactly what it is. So we're going to call this the out of stock speed loader challenge on the Nighthawk website. I went to pick up a speed loader for this thing and they were out of stock. So I'm gonna fire off six rounds and then manually load six individual rounds at a time and then fire off that next six rounds and see how long it takes me to accomplish that feat. So here we go. <laughs> boy <laughs> what a mess that was <laughs> every single round that could be upside down in my hand was upside down in my hand had to resort to the old mouth hold <laughs> i'm tired of this dude mean mugging me so i'm gonna shoot him in the face <laughs> Tell you what guys, double action revolvers are a lot of fun.
sometimes I forget just how fun they are because I spend so much time shooting semi-autos. On the Nighthawk website, there are a number of different Korth revolvers available for you to choose from. Quite a few models out there. The one that I happen to have here today is one of their more affordable models, and it's called the Mongoose. And one of the really cool features of the Mongoose is that it can shoot 357, 38 Special and 9mm with a quick swap of the cylinder. And we'll demonstrate that for you here now. But first, I'm going to fire off six rounds on the mean face with some 357 Magnums, and then I'm going to switch over to 9mm and show you that process. A little bit more punch with those 357s. All right, cylinder is empty, gun is clear. What I'm going to do now, push the button right here on the frame. And when I do that, the cylinder will just slide out to the front. I'm going to grab my 9mm cylinder in my pocket. I'm going to do the same thing, push that button in again, slide the cylinder back in, and now the gun is set up as a 9mm. Now, it does not require moon clips, but it also has another very cool feature that I'm going to show you here in a second. So I'm going to load up six rounds of nine millimeter. This is some Federal 124 grain ball. We'd like to thank our friends over at Federal for supplying the ammunition free of charge to the channel. All right, six rounds, no moon clips, nine millimeter. Watch this. When I hit the ejector, kicks them out. On the inside, I'll try to get a close-up shot with the macro lens. There's a little tiny surface that's raised that grabs that rim of the 9mm that allows the gun to, uh, to eject them. Let's see how many more 9mm I have in my pocket. Eh, darn it, I only have two. So I might as well show you this as well. The paw on the revolver is on the right-hand side, so when you're loading one or two rounds and you want to line them up, you'll do it like this. All right? And so my live rounds are over here. When I cock it, you'll see the cylinder rotate to the left or counterclockwise. And again, kicks them out. That's cool. So let's talk a little bit more in depth about how this 9mm system works that allows you to shoot a rimless cartridge out of a revolver, yet still use the hand ejector and kick out those empty cases. Now I said there's a little detent inside there, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you some really close-up photography, but there are little detents on each point of the star on the ejector. Each of these detents, when you push them into the cylinder, when you push them down, there's a little bit of resistance, there's a little claw that is retracted and that allows you to put the round in with no resistance. Now, when you push the ejector out, those, you'll feel it pop. Those little detents pop out and then it engages. It'll pop out a little tiny piece that will engage with the rim on the nine millimeter right there, which allows it then to pull it out and kick it out. And then when the star goes back home, push it home, click it, it retracts that little claw, if you will, that's grabbing the rim. It's that type of attention to detail that I suspect contributes to the cost of the gun. It's really, really ingenious how they've accomplished that. When you get your new Korth pistol, it will come in a box like this when you open it up. Come with a little warning slip in there telling you the guns are dangerous. An owner's manual that's in German and in English, but it's a very well illustrated manual English portion will be in the back part of the manual, German being in the front, but nice color illustrations. The English is a little bit, you can tell it's translated by Germans. Pistol will come in a form-fitted case. In this case, it was ordered with a 9mm cylinder. The 9mm cylinder will come in this Nighthawk bag. Then you'll have your sight tools and then two spent cases, one for 9mm and one for 357 Magnum, because this gun chambers both. I think it goes without saying, this is the nicest revolver I've ever fired. And it's certainly the nicest revolver I think I've ever seen. Now, I've played with some pretty nice revolvers over the years. Most of them tricked out Smith & Wessons and things like that with really nice actions on them. And I would say this gun, out of the box, is every bit as good as those customized revolvers that I've seen and shot 
over the years. And of course the price reflects that. But the mongoose, again, is kind of at their entry level in this particular offering. Uh, if you have more money to spend and you want to get something really, really nice, they have this case hardened pistol that's just stunning. But I want to say it was like $8,000 and that's certainly something, and it's a limited edition, certainly something only a collector would want. But if you're a hardcore revolver guy and you're just looking for the pinnacle of revolvers, you might want to take a look at one of these mongoose revolvers or something in the line of the these particular pistols because I think you're really going to like them. I've been blown away by it. Again, I'm not a huge revolver collector or shooter, but this gun, man, when you put a few cylinders through it, you're really gonna understand why it commands the price that it does. Guys, if you like the content that we produce here at the Military Arms Channel, a great way to support us would be to come become part of our Patreon family. There is a link in the video description below. Also, right here on YouTube, you got that little join button underneath the video player you're watching right now. Mash that join button, and you can support us here in the age of demonetization. And last but not least, please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Thank you for 14 years of support. We'll talk to you guys soon. And also, that little hump on the back of the hammer really makes it nice for shooting single action. And I like the nine millimeter. <laughs>